Nobody ever asked me if I wanted help. Nobody ever said, what's going on? Why are you doing these things? It wasn't a priority to eat or you know, take care of myself. I think every second is like a minute. Every minute is like an hour. Every hour is like a day. Ohio is home to over 11 million people. It's the seventh most populous state, yet it ranks fourth in the nation for human trafficking reports, behind only Florida, Texas, and California, the three most populous states in the country. 80% of all people in the United States live within 500 miles of Ohio. It makes the state a prime target for trafficking, with the bullseye being the I-70, I-75 intersection just north of Dayton because of the highway systems and transportation logistics that it just seems to be a hotbed. But it's not just an Ohio problem. Over 40 million people are affected worldwide. Human trafficking is widely known as modern day slavery. It's typically defined as using force, fraud, or coercion to exploit a person for labor or sex, especially if a minor is involved. Now, force is exactly what it sounds like, do this or else. Fraud is just being scammed. Coercion is, Webster defines that as um, the threat of force, but our courts are kind of interpreting it as emotional and psychological manipulation. It generally has to do with persuasion that's so extensive that it overbears one's will so that um, they essentially feel like they have no choice. Trafficking is a complex, often misunderstood subject, frequently dramatized in film and television. However, it's much more than the kidnappings and prostitutes seen in these portrayals. Often, Americans hear about trafficking during large gatherings, such as conventions and sporting events. But typically, that's not how it starts. I was one of those people um, who bought into the Hollywood version of what prostitution is. They think it's like the movie Taken. Like whenever I do like an event, like one of the first things I ask is like, you know, have you ever seen the movie Taken? Like this is like the portrayal of what human trafficking looks like. That's not the case. Like we're not being chloroformed and, and pulled into the back of a white van and chained and, and sold that way. If that's what they're looking for, they're gonna miss their 16 year old daughter's best friend who's taking her to parties with her older boyfriend and getting her high or, or pimping her out. The statistics are alarming. The trafficking of women and children is the world's fastest growing crime. Men are victims as well, adding up to around 21% of all trafficking victims. And according to the State Department's Trafficking in Persons Report, there were fewer than 15,000 prosecutions for trafficking worldwide in 2017. It's going on all over the country right in front of us. That's the bad thing about human trafficking is it happens right in front of all of us and we just don't always recognize the signs of it. Human trafficking is highly profitable, bringing in over $150 billion a year for its perpetrators. Some traffickers can make up to six figures through both sex trafficking and labor trafficking. It happens at restaurants, it happens at gas stations, it happens at motels, it happens at convenience stores. So just how does this happen without us noticing? Human trafficking recruitment is often psychological in nature. It's an often overlooked crime in the eyes of the news and the public. Deception is the primary tool of the trafficker. Poverty and a lack of economic opportunities make many susceptible. All human trafficking, labor and sex can be narrowed down to two words, vulnerability and control. They take advantage of those vulnerabilities and they offer things that you would think maybe are too good to be true. Uh, someone who's very down on their luck, who's very, uh, you know, living in poverty, poor, doesn't have any opportunities, a recruiter or a trafficker might offer them a shot at a job. Hey, you could be a model, you could make all kinds of money, just come with me and we'll work this out. Almost all of the labor trafficking in the U.S., we believe, is foreign nationals who are being exploited. I came legally to this country. I'm educated. My wife is educated. I had a good job back in India. 
Three out of every 1,000 people worldwide are victims of forced labor. That's nearly 21 million people. The day I landed, he said, Harold, do you have any cash? And I said, yes, I had $1,000. He said, oh, this is US, man. It's not safe, give it to me. And then he said, give me all your documents. So all my documents, everything was in his custody from the very first day. But little did I know, it was all a plan. So what happened once you're in his clutches for six months, eight months, then you'll never run. At age 15, I got in trouble and I decided to run and not like face my consequences. So I came up here to Columbus to live with my real mother. And within a few weeks, I was smoking crack with my real mom and prostituting on the streets of Columbus. According to the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime, female victims of sex trafficking often start as young as 14. I remember one time I had been held hostage and raped like multiple ways for over four hours. And um, I come back and I'm like crying, I'm distraught, I'm scared, I don't know what to do. I think I was like 16 and um, I'm crying and they tell me to shut the fuck up. Like, Stop crying, nobody wants to hear that. Just get high, like that's, that's the response. I have like a lot of remorse and guilt because like I was brought into this lifestyle by my mom and I brought my sister into this lifestyle as well. Um, little did I know that she had a boyfriend that trafficked her as well. The process of escaping the horrific world of human trafficking can be extremely difficult. Drugs and threats can act as barriers to these victims, with 84% of women using drugs while being trafficked. Sometimes it's over years of verbal abuse and or physical abuse and or sexual abuse, that takes its toll. It chips away at your self-esteem one little bit at a time. The level of mind games and psychological warfare against that woman is very intense. So either she doesn't feel worthy of help or she's had a, a level of trauma bonding where she doesn't even know how to live a, a healthy life. They're all in for helping rescue someone else, but they don't think they're worth the rescue. So where do these victims turn? These are often individuals who have been forcefully addicted to drugs and threatened again and again. How do they turn around a life in a world that has left them feeling abandoned, worthless, and alone? Uh, that's a heavy weight to carry around when you do get um, into recovery and free. Uh, to carry that weight that you, you, know, you sold your body for drugs when it's much, much more than that. You know, a lot of the girls that we deal with are, have become addicted to narcotics, and that's a, that's a way that these traffickers control the girls in order to uh, maintain them going out and working and conducting prostitution activities. When they give you drugs for free, like, they knew what they were doing. They were getting me hooked, because why wouldn't they? If, you're, if you sell drugs, Getting someone hooked is guaranteed money. Although trafficking might appear difficult to combat and enormously difficult to escape, there are a variety of organizations working to fight against traffickers and provide support to survivors. Freedom a la carte is an organization that employs and provides support services for survivors of human trafficking. Other organizations include Saving Our Adolescents from Prostitution, or SOAP, Survivors Inc., Abolition Ohio, Catch Court, and 11th Candle Company. Freedom on the Cart is a community. It's holistic support. Love, accept, acceptance. Um, they, build, they build survivors up and encourage them. So Abolition Ohio is an organization. It is a coalition of like-minded individuals and organizations that are all stakeholders in the, uh, the movement against human trafficking in the greater Miami Valley. Everything I've been through is to help somebody else not to have to go through it. To know that there's a purpose behind everything that's happened to me empowers me and enables me to do the things that I'm doing today. With a smile on my face and pure joy of doing it. There is redemption. There is life after sex trafficking. We don't heal in isolation. You know, we heal in community. Human trafficking can seem like a massive, unstoppable problem, but there are many ways someone can help fight this crisis. Look twice when you see that girl walking down the street. Ask yourself why she's there. 
it's too easy to assume someone else will do something, someone else will call. And the scary thing is that it, when that sense of responsibility for doing something is spread out, again, the net result is often that no one does anything. I always believe that tolerance, tolerating a crime, maybe it is domestic violence, human trafficking, is bigger crime. I think you need to stand up. The structural causes of trafficking are, are getting worse. Things like inequality and globalization that have led to this epidemic of human trafficking are still there. But the response to it, the awareness, the education are continuing to grow and be strong. Those fighting human trafficking believe part of the answer might be educating service providers, such as the police, those working in the judicial system, teachers, and the medical field. If we can educate them on how to provide services and trauma-informed care to these people, they might be able to intervene and change their story. Those girls that are walking down that street <laughs> are so lost and lonely. And a kind person or a kind word could go so far. The survivors of four starters were strong finishers in life. Love yourself enough that once you break free from that, don't let them keep holding you down. You can accomplish any dream or aspiration that you have because it is possible. 